today we are going to discuss about eavesdropping on bird calls but what does it mean by eavesdropping on bird calls is it listening to the birds or is it recording bird calls or is it like studying bird calls and uh, looking at it from a different perspective of science so any wild guess you can just put all your answers in the chat box whatever you feel like okay eavesdropping on bird calls is just listening to them and have fun now just to know what all birds are around or it may be just to record bird calls and store them and then uh, share them with the people or everyone around or there is lot a uh, lot more beyond this maybe by listening to the birds we can understand the habitat any wild guesses yeah actually is wrong means everything all that i told you about it's nothing but art and science of listening to the bird calls so how do I, what do i mean by art it's an art of listening to the bird calls simple it's an art to go out there in wilderness or even in your backyard and look for birds go closer to them without disturbing these birds also merge with the surroundings and surprise the birds as if you are not there and observing them little bit of help of science is also taken like you can see in this photograph i am holding a nice gadget which looks more or less like a dish antenna or upside down umbrella so it's 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 actually called a parabola dish what i am holding in my hand and you can see something coming out from that dish that's actually a microphone i know uh, you must have played a game in your childhood or even now we used to use magnifying glass to concentrate all sun rays and burn the paper similarly this parabola grabs all the noise from the surrounding reflects it right in the center and where the microphone is attached this microphone is further linked to a recorder yeah you can see it on my pouch or the waist pouch something big like a phone is attached over there and with this recorder you can record the sounds which are collected by parabola dish and obviously when you are using this gadget to listen to the good quality sound you need a pair of microphones it's as simple as that so this is how you take help of science or maybe you can put up some recorders out there in field uh, hung up on the trees yeah easiest way the art uh, which i learned to listen to bird calls simple trick just cup your ears like this and try to look out the direction yes you can even try now if you are speak uh, using speakers yeah it looks like we are becoming a summer deer or a spotted deer with long uh, or big ears yeah but main question is why do bird calls any wild guesses yeah it's a nice winter coming on and they are happy so they are chirping or birds are going hungry and that's why they are calling or maybe they are scared and that's why they are making hell lot of noise there could be several reasons so let me know why do bird calls what are your thoughts on this question again let's use this chat box yeah you can you can write down all your answers in the chat box yes someone is saying communicate yeah nice someone has also said to claim territory oh great mating hmm lots of people think yeah they do also call for danger situations yes and yeah lot of words have gone 
to the mating or attracting mates. Yeah, and Ajay, Ajay Kumar has given a fantastic answer. Bird calls change with the dangers. Yeah, it looks like everyone out there is a birder and you all know a lot of things about bird calls. Excellent. Yes. So let's begin. Let's add some more information about bird calls. So first point, rising and retiring calls. Yes, the way we wake up and just stretch ourselves and call out something or we call out our parents. Similarly, birds will wake up from the place where they roost or rest for the night hall. And that's called rising. And immediately, they will come out on some vantage point or some branches and start calling. This calls are nothing but the communication going on between the flock members and telling each other about their plan for the day. And this is called rising calls. Similarly, when they go back to retiring or to rest for the night, these birds again communicate and tell each other about their hiding locations. And these are called as retiring calls. But tell me, don't you think so? For an owl, it will be other way around because owl will go back to sleep in morning and come out at night or the dusk time. So yes, exactly. For owls, rising and retiring calls are other way around. Similarly, for birds, which prefer nocturnal habits. Then yes, we all know communication calls. Birds do communicate in between their flock members. Uh, then young ones communicate to their parents. Parents communicate to their young ones. And there are lots of ways of communication. Yes, you must have seen birds flying and calling. And sometimes there's a big flock like cormorants or goose or ducks. And they keep flying and uh, they keep communicating. And these are called as flight calls. Sometimes birds like herons, like purple heron or gray heron, they are chased by kites or other members. And then they show their agitation like Wah! in the flight. And that's also a flight call. Similarly, lots of uh, our friends have told alarm calls and distress calls. Yes, these are the calls which indicate dangers are around, which indicates a threat or a predatory bird or maybe a cat. Then food begging calls. Yes, little tiny chicks sit out there in nest or sometimes on the nearest branch to the nest and keep chirping like, yeah. And these are nothing but food begging calls. You must have also seen that while begging for food, these chicks, they open their mouth quite wide and keep fluttering their wings. Yeah, that's the expression that they're begging for food. Then mating calls, yes, when birds, male bird and female bird, they're ready to start their family. Uh, that time, they sometimes indulge in songs or simply give mating calls. Also breeding songs, yes. As we go along, we'll learn today more about breeding song. Okay, let's let's learn about bird calls and bird songs. So all these factors that communication, threats, and rest all the areas, birds will use simple call. And these are nothing but, yeah, you can see some graph over here. So I'll explain it to you. So these are nothing but a simple notes, which are, which is the same call repeated again and again there is unlikely a lot of variation in this call. So this particular call is termed as a call. You must have seen this species of birds, the oriental magpie robin. You can find oriental magpie robin in your backyard or gardens or even in outskirts of the city or sometimes even in the jungles. So this friend of us is a great example to describe bird call and bird song. 
So Magpie Robin has got a simple note of a whistle, which is shown in this graph. So now we can even see bird calls by using different softwares. Similarly, the way we see our heartbeats on a sheet of paper, which is called a sonogram, this is called a spectrogram. On the x-axis, the horizontal axis, we have got time measured in seconds. And on the y-axis, we have got frequency bands. Yes, what, whatever we hear is measure, the quality of sound is measure in the frequency bands. Okay, without further delay, let's try this out. You keep looking at the spectrogram and the dark lines on this graph while I play this call. Yeah. Like four note calls. Simple, same whistle coming again and again. So this is called as a call. Now, it's the same bird, our same magpie robin fellow, same individual is using different permutation combinations of whistles and trills. Oh. Trill. Yeah, trills are called as the high pitched and low pitched whistles used by birds and they are more or less like vibrating notes which are used in the song. So now birds will acquire or learn different calls from the surrounding. Sometimes these are calls of the neighboring uh, birds or these are just man-made sounds, or these are sounds of some machines. By acquiring these calls, birds will make a lot of permutation and combination, and they keep repeating these notes, and this turns into a song. The basic purpose of song is to attract the female birds and also defend territory by the other males out there. Okay, again, Let's practice this. Keep looking at this graph and this dark portion of the whistles and let's listen, listen to the call or the song simultaneously. You'll feel that one of the note, the last note is repeated in the song. Okay, let's listen to this once again. Yeah, so same note was repeated again and again along with some variations. So this is nothing but an example of song. Okay, but do you feel that listening to bird calls is a new thing or are we doing it from ages or right from the time humans started wandering out on this earth, we were hunters and gatherers. So we kept observing our surroundings. So I think bird calls has got a lot of special place in our evolution as well. Yeah, and I was there out in Corbett in foothills of Himalayas doing out some field work and camping right at the uh, bank of Ram Ganga River. And when I came to know about this folklore, I got excited. So let me tell you this folklore. It so happened that while we were camping at Ram Ganga River, I was waking up early and I used to go out with my parabola dish, my binoculars, and also observe birds and record bird calls. In the neighboring village, right adjacent to our camp, there was, a, there was an old lady called Ammaji. So for four or five days, I 
I saw Ammaji gathering her cattle and coming out very close to the jungle in the open fields or the grasslands to graze his cattle. Every day, I used to go out and venture out in the open to look for bird calls, uh, birds and record bird calls. And by the time of dawn, I always used to see Ammaji coming out and meeting uh, me right at the exact spot or trespassing from there. I was wondering, you know why? I didn't see Ammaji wearing a wristwatch or carrying a mobile phone. One day in the evening, while Ammaji was going back to her place from our camp, I just asked her to stop for a while for a cup of tea. And yes, I wanted to ask her, how do you come to know about this time? And how do you follow time exactly? So while having a cup of chai or a tea, I asked Ammaji, Ammaji, आपको समय का सही पता कैसे चलता है रोज सुबह देखता हूं आप उसी समय गईयों को लेके चराने के लिए आती है अम्मा जी हाउ डू यू नो कम टू हाउ डू यू नो द एग्जैक्ट टाइम ऑफ द डॉन एंड हाउ हाउ डू यू कम टू दिस ग्रास लेंस टू ग्रेज योर कैटल विदाउट मिसिंग आउट इवन ऑन अ सेकेंड मैंने तो आपको ना घड़ी इस्तेमाल करते हुए देखा ना आपके पास मोबाइल है कैसे पता चलता है आपको समय अरे बेटा बहुत आसान है हम जंगल वालों को ये घड़ी मोबाइल से क्या लेना देना ओ डियर इट्स वेरी सिंपल we are jungle dwellers we don't need wrist watch and mobiles and fancy gadgets like you aapne ye chidiya dekhi hai na maine dekha hai aap chidiya ki awaaz sunte bhi ho aur fir bhi aap mujhse pooch rahe ho mujhe samay ka pata kaise chalta hai you have see, i have seen you observing and listening to the birds and still you are asking me how do i come to know exact time बहुत आसान है हमारा एक दोस्त है जंगल में ये जंगली मुर्गा रोज सुबह उठ के हमें बताता है सवेरी हो सवेरी हो इट्स वेरी सिंपल वी हैव गॉट दिस बर्ड आउट हियर इन जंगल्स ही इज अवर फ्रेंड एवरी मॉर्निंग ही कॉल्स अर आउट गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग आई वॉज सो फैसिनेटेड बाई दिस स्टोरी एंड After leaving the camp, I told this story to other villagers as well, and they said, "Yeah, we all know the jungle fowl, red jungle fowl, calls out every morning, 'Saberi ho, saberi ho.' Yes, I'm sure everyone is excited to listen to this call. And there we go." interesting isn't it similarly in deccan plateau or maharashtra and karnataka and areas of gujarat there's a famous folklore as soon as monsoon starts arriving the thunderstorms occur and initial rain started drizz it starts drizzling there's one particular bird which is a friend of farmers yes a common hawk cuckoo starts calling and tells out people get ready get ready it's annotated in marathi as per teva per teva which means get ready and start flying in your fields let's see how this common hawk cuckoo tells us about the arrivals of rains
चलो कम टू पुणे आई टेल यू सम स्टोरीज फ्रॉम माय बैक यार्ड सो दिस इज वेर आई लिव इन द पुणे सिटी राइट इन द मिडल ऑफ महाराष्ट्र यस दिस इज अ स्पेशल स्टोरी all of you must have observed that during this lockdown the city was still and peaceful there was no sound of rickshaws motors or vehicles and everyone was there at home and we could hear birds quite clearly similarly on one of the afternoons i heard these red vented bulbuls just going crazy like and fluttering in the in the small bush i just went downstairs and stood quite still and eventually i saw bulbuls were chasing something while making all this chaos yes this phenomena is called mowing and after a while i saw a long rat snake just slither around from the bush came to the ground and disappeared so sometimes looking observing this common birds in our surroundings helps us to get special sightings yeah we all know crows keep croaking all the time but one in, once in the evening i was just doing a checklist of birds in my backyard but it was so special all of a sudden a bunch of 30 crows just came and started croaking like wow 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 there was so much of variation in the calls and all of a sudden they just kept going towards one branch on the coconut tree and they managed to shoo away a big crested hawk eagle yeah i was so excited to find this crested hawk eagle right there in the middle of city yeah a drama by fantail you must have seen this fantail there's a photograph of a fantail spot breasted fantail right on the uh, top corner and you must have seen this bird fluttering its uh, tail like a fan so after a nice shower this greater cuckoo was just uh, perching on top of the branch or sitting on the branch and he was just cleaning his feathers but all of a sudden there was a pair of a fante they just came and started making this uh, calls i think they were scared because cuckoo also predates or eats young ones of other birds and even sometimes raid nest of other birds so this fantail came and started making calls like and finally they managed to chase out this cuckoo okay there's a time for a poll so what do you think all the above mentioned examples were type of which calls were they flight calls or food begging calls simply retiring calls or alarm calls or distress calls alarm calls and distress calls are one and the same so quickly use your chat box and let me know your answers or you can just type the option a b c or d a uh, siddharth i'm starting a poll so okay great so everyone if uh, i hope you can see a poll on your screens and you can vote there itself great amazing you know why i can see the results of the poll yeah lots of people are inclined towards saying that these are alarm calls or distress calls and yes no one is saying food begging call so perfect yeah okay so major votes goes to alarm calls or distress calls exactly these are alarm calls the birds are scared and distressed and they are mobbing something and uh, alarming the other birds and the similar birds around there okay now there is a story called trick by cuckoo 
right in the monsoon, we kept hearing this gray-bellied cuckoo quite a long time. But one day, when me and my friends were out there on a small hillock, we were surprised to see gray-bellied cuckoo perched right on top of the bubble tree, a small tree, and it was out in open. The usual shy bird was out in open and calling out loudly. He was just giving out his uh, breeding song. So we just stood there and yeah, we saw the entire drama. After a while, jungle prenia and ashy prenia and tailor birds and bulbuls started chasing this gray-bellied cuckoo. You know why? Gray-bellied cuckoo lays their egg in, in the nest of these small birds. Yeah, they are called as brood parasites. So while the other birds were trying to chase this single individual and they managed to chase him quite a long way. But and all the birds from the flock, this mixed flock, went chasing this same bird further and further away. We were just standing at same location. And all of a sudden, there was another cuckoo, another gray-bellied cuckoo, which came and ducked right in the thickets at the base of this bubble tree. Yes, we understood. The second bird was a female. She must have gone down and laid her egg in one of the prenia's nest. Yeah, this is how we saw cuckoo trick all the other birds in the surrounding. And after a while, one of my friends even saw this exciting thing. Yeah, it's, it's not that the big bird is trying to eat the smaller bird, but the big bird is a chick of gray-billed cuckoo. And it's getting fed by this uh, purple drum sunbird female. Yeah, it's quite surprising, no? Such a big offspring. For a tiny parent, yeah. So this is how cuckoo tricks smaller birds. Okay, let me tell you another story about my, one of the birds in my backyard. I kept hearing a squeaky sound of gray hornbill, Indian gray hornbill for a long time. Then I realized these birds are coming out there and eating this ornamental uh, uh, fruits of ornamental tree. So I decided, I just want to photograph this gray hornbill tossing the fruit. But yes, the great clue was the chattery call of hornbill. I kept listening to the hornbills and precisely managed my position and got a great shot. So this is how eavesdropping on bird calls helps you to even photograph birds. So next time, whenever you hear this squeaky sound, just go out and try to look for gray hornbill, Indian gray hornbill. Okay, this magpie robin has amazed me for quite a few times. You know why? As we learned about song, and while I was recording this mail, I was surprised. He even mimicked uh, a predatory bird like a shikra and his another neighbor, a common tailor bird, and made a beautiful, amazing song. Yeah, let's listen to the song of Magpie Robin. <laughs> So, all the time, songs are not very complex, but it starts with the gradual process. I learned this by observing long tail strike. Yes, 
long tail shrike also mimics different calls of other birds and recently i recorded one of the individual even mimicking squeaking sound and trills made by parakeets and even harsh calls as parakeets uh, were in the surrounding yeah without a further delay let's listen to the practicing or the rehearsal of a song so it's nothing but called as sub song yeah so sub songs are quite soft and it's just nothing but a rehearsal that's why they are not loud like the original songs okay now let me take you to a special place called satpura tiger reserve yes it's right at the heart of the india in the state of maharashtra this area is filled with mixed forest with evergreen and dry deciduous forest and a long chain or the parallel chain of mountain ranges yeah my initial friendship with jungle babblers was not that smooth you know why jungle babblers are always in a flock and there is always one bird which perches high up to look out for danger i even made a nice bird path for birds to come out uh, right there at my window or next to my room so that i could record the calls and take photographs but whenever i used to go out initially with all the gadgets camera and parabola dish and recorder babblers used to get scared it was a new thing for them to see a biped uh, to see a human walking out there with this funny gadgets and you know what for 15 days i could just record nothing but their distress calls they were not so happy to see me around with all these gadgets and now we are even going to see their calls yeah after chaos of babblers let's move to someone who keeps announcing his dynasty yes eagles are not songbirds but they do keep calling quite loudly to establish their territory and especially tell other birds in the surrounding that this is their home and many a times they will build their nest on the same tree so this is how i found the changeable hawk eagle giving out a squeaky sound to call out to a mate and even telling other birds beware of the danger i'm i'm the king of the, my dynasty
Yeah. Oh, this looks like Drongo, no? Yes. But this bird really tricked me. I was new to Satpura and first time when I saw this folk tale Drongo cuckoo, I saw it in the evening. So I, I couldn't see the difference, the nice dots on the tail. And you know what? The sound also tricked me. So I was actually recording a bird which was perched higher up on the pole and calling out very loudly in the evening. I felt it's a black drongo mimicking crested hawk eagle's call. But eventually, when I digged more into bird calls and referred a lot of material out there, I realized I recorded a bird which comes out to central India during summertime. So nothing, it's nothing but a summer migrant. And it was a folktale drongo cuckoo. Let's listen how similar the call is. Yeah, so this is how science helps us to identify birds based on the calls. Another summer migrant or another bird which comes out to central India to breed in the summertime. And as soon as it arrives, he starts saying, I am here, I am here. Sometimes he's also joined by other birds like Indian cuckoo who really loves to party. Yeah, I'm just joking. The call of Indian cuckoo is annotated as one more bottle and call of Indian pitta is annotated. I'm here, I'm here. Great, no? Yeah. But there's a resident bird in central India which, which is great in tricking everyone. Yes, the greater racket tailed drongo. You can see here in this photograph. Once very late in the evening, when we were just roaming out, doing our safari, we heard this bird, racket tailed drongo, which was perching on a dry tree and right on top of the tree on a dead branch. And he even managed to give out the sound uh, very similar to camera shutters. Yeah, you know, all, all those DSLR cameras, they take uh, photographs one after other and sometimes even nine photographs every second and they sound like chick, 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 chick. and this drongo was mimicking the similar sound. He even made it more complex. He mimicked the calls of jungle owlet and even jungle babblers. Yeah, so this is how birds sometimes can mimic lots of calls from the surrounding and make really complex song. But Racketail Drongo uses these mimicking skills even to attract other birds while Drongo is feeding. But why he's attracting other birds out there? I'll tell you. All these birds, they come together and feed on the different insects. Uh, Drongo will catch insects on the leaves, on the ground, on the bark, almost everywhere. Woodpeckers will come and peck the wood. Jungle babblers will turn, turn all the leaves on the floor of the jungle. And this is how they create a lot of disturbance in the area and feed together so everyone can fill their belly and get fair share of insects. Yeah, so now there's a time for poll. Tell me, 
a mixed flock of bird species feeding together is also known as foraging flock or hunting flock or simply hunting party or singing party. What do you think? Yeah, lots of people are saying it's a foraging flock. And yes, it is a hunting flock. But yeah, there is a common term used in literature like Jim Corbett stories or stories by Kenneth Anderson or other wildlifers. Okay, doesn't matter. It's simply called as hunting party. Yes, this is a foreigner flock, but common term is a hunting party. Thanks a lot for sharing out your views on this. Okay, get ready for the quiz time. Let's do it real quick. I'm gonna describe a bird and I will also make that bird appear out over here. And then you try to guess which bird I am mimicking. Ready? There we go. Okay, our first bird is slightly about the size of sparrow. It's green in color and usually likes fruits of fig tree. Okay, you'll find this bird perching right on top, topmost branches and gives out a call like this. It's easy. Roll down all your answers in the chat box. Wow. Yes, nothing but a coppersmith barbet. Lot of people say it, white chick barbet, but white chick barbet call is. Yeah, I was mimicking. Copper Smith puppet. Here is the picture of Copper Smith puppet. Okay, again, second question. This is a small size bird, yellow in color. When it comes in breeding time, it has got jet black on head and the back. And right out there in the midday, Sometimes you, you will hear a call like and this goes on and on, on and on. Okay, tell me what is this bird? Hmm. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. All of you know your birds in your backyard quite very well. Most of people are saying it's common Ayora. And someone, yeah, Riddhi doesn't know the name of the bird, but she can recognize the call. Great Riddhi. Here is our common Ayora. Okay, now we are looking at the bird perched on fencing and sometimes this bird, which is about the size of a crow, keeps looking for nest of tiny birds and even predates on their eggs or their uh, young ones. And he calls out very similar to langurs or even a hand pump or a pump on the open well and he sounds like <laughs> yes every know everyone knows the kukul 
वेरी वेल यस अ ग्रेटर कुकल लास्ट क्वेज सो नाउ लेट्स गो टू फील्ड्स और फार्म लैंड और इवन ओपन ग्रास लैंड फॉर दैट मैटर एंड आई थिंक दिस बर्ड जस्ट लव कॉफी एंड केक Yeah, I'm joking. He is about the size of a chicken or a hen, and sounds like. Yeah, roll down your answers in the chat box. what do you feel is calling out there in the grassland early in morning and late in the evening and sounds like no it's quite a big bird almost size of the hen yeah kathy has guessed it right any more wild guesses someone asking for coffee cake coffee cake coffee cake yes a grey francolin there we go here is a picture of grey francolin now we all uh, we are all come to the end of our talk but let me take you to jungle jungles of satpura we are out there in the veranda of a rest house late in the evening about the time time of dusk little bit later and while i was eavesdropping on jungle owlets jungle night jars and frogs croaking out in the stream and crickets this eavesdropping turned into a real special moment those who want to close their eyes they are very welcome and you can imagine sitting out there in the veranda with me in satpura tiger reserve or those who are interested to see the spectrogram they can keep their eyes wide open let's listen to this jungle calling yes is dropping on bird calls can turn really special yes everyone must have guessed it's the king of the jungle tiger calling out roaring quite loud out there in the pitch dark so with this introduction to eaves dropping on bird calls i hope this will motivate you to eaves drop on bird calls enjoy is dropping on bird calls happy birding thank you